Okay, well hi guys. Uh, in the previous video we um, talked about uh, the various errors that I found in these uh, in these jaws and um, I had some thoughts about how um, I was going to fix those. Um, we've come to a conclusion and um, so I'll show you the method that I used to grind the jaws. Um, the first thing that I do is uh, chuck a, a piece of bar, uh, two inch precision bar, and I've got quite a bit of that, uh, in the jaws and we find to our horror that um, all of the jaws are bell mouthed and uh, the, error, the bell mouthing at the end, or the error at the end, is, is up to 10,000. So some of these um, some of these jaws have got a 10,000 error at this end. This is number two jaw. There was daylight at this end of the jaw. At the, at the outer end. Uh, and this particular bar, there was a 10 thou error between this end of the jaw and the, and the, um, and the bar. So um, what I decided to do, rather than have to grind 10 thou off most of the, uh, off most of the jaw, um, I set this up in, uh, in the milling machine and I set that end 10 thou low by running a dial gauge across there. Uh, and then clamped up the, uh, the vise and ran a tungsten carbide um, end mill across the whole jaw. And of course what that ended up doing was taking thin thou off this end and nothing off that end. So I'll just, I'll just run that past you again. Uh, so this jaw, had, there was thin thou of daylight at this end uh, with the workpiece. So I took the jaw out, put it in the, uh, in the vise in the milling machine and uh, with a dial gauge tapped the jaw until it was 10 thou low at this end compared with that end. Clamped up the vise, <coughs> then ran a milling cutter across the whole jaw which ended up taking 10 thou off this end and nothing off that end. So essentially this jaw has now approximately a zero error uh, within, you know, give or take, give or take a thousandth or so. Uh, so we did that with each jaw individually, which meant that all of the jaws essentially had an, had an error that was now much closer to zero than it was before, which meant that when we do the grinding, we don't have to grind as much off each jaw. Now, the tool post grinder, that was another issue. Um, this tool post grinder had a, um, a two inch wheel on this face here, didn't have an arbor and of course the two inch wheel won't go into the jaws so uh, I made up this extension uh, for a smaller stone, this is a white stone and um, I made the arbor right between centers <coughs> so it was dead accurate uh, when we mounted it on the tool post grinder it was terrible there was a run out at this end that uh, you couldn't believe and uh, eventually I decided that the error was in that surface there of the tool post grinder. So we took the arbor off. Fortunately there is a, a flat on this end of the um, tool post grinder which allowed me to, um, to hold it with a magnetic chuck and carefully I um, ground about one thousandths off that face there with the, top, with the uh, surface grinder and now this arbor runs with uh, essentially zero run out uh, which was um, ideal for grinding the jaws. So let's um, get started and I'll show you um, uh, how we uh, went about it. Right I mentioned before that I actually see daylight uh, through here and I've got this um, piece of uh, cinched up snug and it's centered and you can actually see daylight under the jaws there's uh, I'll just grab a feather gauge there's a 5 thou feeler gauge I can't get 5 thou under that one but I can see daylight under that one try a 1 thou there's a 1 Right, I can just get one thou under that one, that's jaw number three. Uh, here's jaw number one, it looks like at least 
five or six there, let's try five. Yeah, well, that's probably closer to ten. That's door number one. So that's door number two. That's a five. Try a try a seven. Yeah, I can just get seven under that one. And door number number four. Right, jaw number four looks fairly tight, so they're all different and they are um, nowhere uh, near parallel. Now this piece of bar is a piece of ground, um, uh, it's hydraulic shaft actually, so it's uh, ground and, um, and chromed, so it's a fairly good piece of bar. Okay, there is the first major issue. I've got the jaws sitting on the uh, on the mill mill table, and number one jaw is at least a millimetre, probably more, maybe two millimetres um, higher than all of the other all of the other jaws. Um, number three and number four are reasonably close. Number two is a little bit different from number three, so. Uh, that's uh, that's looking at the surface here. Uh, same applies to that surface. That one uh, is yet to be determined. So uh, it is. Um, Probably millable. Uh, big Chinese jaws are very hard, but I can I can file the back of the jaw. So with a carbide cutter, uh, I should be able to mill them to size. The jaw approximately level at the moment. I'm not trying to equal the uh, all of the jaws up. I'm just trying to get them so they are all. The bell mouthing has disappeared on each one. Sorry, 13 thousandths. Um, 32 hundredths on this metric. Uh, on this metric uh, gauge. So I need this side to be <coughs> 32, 32 hundredths lower than that. That's too far. side of the jaw up <clears throat> in divisions at a time. 10, 20, 30, 40. It's not too far.
end. Right. right, that's made a big difference. That's the jaw that I've just um, milled and we, sorry it's not that one, it's that one. Uh, we had eight there. Uh, an eighth hour gap under there before and now we're down to probably half a thousand so I think that's a one hour yeah that's a one hour a one hour um, feeler gauge and I can't get that I can just under there so we're on the right track so I'll do this jaw and that one um, and then I think we'll be in a position where we can grind the jaws in situ. Right, so we've got enough travel without the uh, dog hitting the tool. We've got to turn that down to the diameter of the stone. And the inside diameter of the stone is 12.7. Check that once more. Yep, we're good to go there.
Right, so we've got this to diameter exactly. I'm just going to face that shoulder. I'm going to have to move the tool for that. So we don't have a lot of um, uh, a lot of option here. I need to work out uh, whether I use an imperial nut or a metric nut to thread that portion. I'll be back to you shortly. Yeah. 